Hey guys, it's Sarah from Extra Credit Design Club, and today I'm gonna to share with you my 15 most used keyboard shortcuts in InDesign. At the end of this video, I'm also gonna show you how you can create your own custom keyboard shortcuts. The first thing I'm going to do once I have my InDesign document open is I'm gonna hit the letter M on my keyboard. That's the shortcut to draw a rectangle. I can also, if I hold down Shift, um, draw a perfect square, but for the sake of this, I'm just gonna work with this rectangle. My next shortcut is I'm gonna hit the letter V on my keyboard to get my selection tool. The selection tool, like it sounds like, allows me to select, uh, select objects so that I can then move them around. The direct selection tool can be particularly useful if I'm trying to just manipulate a part of a shape. So for example, when I come here to this anchor point, you can see that my direct selection tool has a little square next to it, indicating that when I click on the anchor point, it will change just that anchor point. The direct selection tool in InDesign is really cool also because if you come over to the edge between two anchor points, you'll see that little line next to the direct selection tool. I can also change the shape this way, which can be really helpful, especially if you're doing perspective. The next keyboard shortcut we're gonna talk about pertains to the fill and the stroke of a shape. So right now you can see I have my black square. If I hit F5, it will bring up my swatch, my color swatch, so I can change this color to be pink. And let's say I wanna also add a stroke. Something that I can do is I can hit um, X on my keyboard, and you can see over here how it brought my stroke in front of my fill, so now I can edit my stroke. And that was just from hitting X on my keyboard. So let's say I wanna make my stroke blue. I'll pump it up just so that you can see it easier. Um, so now if I hit X again, you can see it toggles back and forth between the two. If I actually wanted to swap the stroke in the fill color, I would just hit Shift X and it would swap them back and forth. I'm not doing anything except hitting Shift X on my keyboard. So those are really useful. I use that all the time. Another keyboard shortcut that I want to talk about that I actually use really frequently is um, you just hit the forward slash, the one that's on the same key as the question mark. If you hit that, it will get rid of the color. Um, so again, you can see it got rid of my fill color. If I also wanna get rid of my stroke color, I would just hit X again, and then hit the forward slash, and boom. I no longer have any color in my fill or my stroke. Okay, for this next part, I'm just gonna draw a few squares. Let's say I wanna select everything on my page. I'm gonna hit Command A. That's your next keyboard shortcut. That allows you to select everything on the page. If I wanna group all of those items together, I would just hit Command G. That would group those. This is the same as Illustrator. If I wanted to lock these three shapes so that I couldn't move them anymore, I would just hit Command L, and I'm no longer able to move them. Um, in Illustrator, it's Command 2, so it takes a little bit of getting used to that it's different in InDesign and Illustrator. Let's get rid of these shapes, so first I have to unlock them, which I would do by hitting Command, Option, L, and then I can delete them. First, I'm gonna hit the letter F on my keyboard. That's the frame option, which allows me to draw these boxes that I can then just drop photos straight into. So I'm gonna draw a couple of frames um, to use as examples. Once I have my frames in there, I'm just gonna select both of them, and I'm gonna hit Command D on my keyboard. Command D is the place functionality that it pulls up my finder and allows me to drop in whichever photos from my desktop or my computer that I want. So these are the two photos that I'm going to use. Um, in the order that I clicked on them, they will be selected. So if I click here, it will drop it in that frame. And if I click here, it will drop the second one in this frame. As you can see, these photos are much too large for the frames that I put them in. So there's a way I can fix that with keyboard shortcuts. First, I'm gonna click on the photo that I wanna fix. I'm going to click Command Option Shift E, and that will fit the photo into the frame so that I have the full photo fitting into my frame. Um, I'll do it over here as well. Again, that was Command Option Shift E. It fits that photo into the frame. As you can see, however, now I have a frame that is larger than my photo. So I can also fix that through a keyboard shortcuts. The keyboard shortcut I wanna use for this is Command Option C. Command Option C just sucks in anything that's left over and aligns it to the photo. And again, Command Option, oh, sorry. Yeah, Command Option C. Um, this also works the other way though. If I have a tiny, tiny, tiny little frame and I want to add in a photo, again, I'm gonna hit Command D 
and I'm going to click this here. You can see that my photo is much too small, but if I want my photo to be the, the exact size that it actually is, not the size of the frame that I'm hoping for it to be, I can again hit um, Command Option C and it will fit my frame to be the size of the photo. Obviously this is too large, but there are times when this is helpful. If I wanna resize my photo within the frame, I can just select my frame and hit Shift and Command while I drag and it will keep my photo within the frame and allow me to resize it. The cool thing is this also works with text. So if I hit T on my keyboard, that'll bring up my text box. If I click and just start typing, Coney Island, which is where I took these photos, um, you can see obviously that I, again, have a frame that's too large. If I click on that frame and I hit uh, Command Option C, it will resize my text box to fit to the text. And if I hit Shift Command, I can again resize the text. If I don't hit command and I just hit shift, um, it will just resize the text box. So there you have it. Those are some of my most used InDesign keyboard shortcuts. But now I'm going to show you how you can create your own custom keyboard shortcuts in InDesign. So we'll come back to our document and we are going to go to edit keyboard shortcuts. Um, your default will say default on it and you're not actually allowed to edit the default keyboard shortcuts, but you can create a custom set that you can then manipulate as much as you'd like. So in order to do that, you're gonna come over here to new set and you're just going to create a new one. Call it whatever you want. I'm gonna call it custom shortcuts. It's saying based on set default, you probably want that. That's probably your only option to begin with. So now that I have my custom shortcut set selected, I can find whatever it is I wanna customize and make that customization. So as I mentioned earlier, it's always been kind of frustrating to me that InDesign and Illustrator have different keyboard shortcuts for lock. That's a function that I use all of the time, so that's something that I'm gonna to try to fix. In Illustrator, the keyboard shortcut is Command 2, and in Illustrator, sorry, in Illustrator, yeah, in Illustrator, the keyboard shortcut is Command 2, and in InDesign, it's Command L. Command L does make more sense, but I'm more used to Command 2. So I'm gonna change my InDesign keyboard shortcut to be Command 2, just like Illustrator. So what I wanna do is I wanna find where that functionality lives normally. For me, I'm doing Command L for lock, which I can see is in the object menu under lock. So now when I go back to my keyboard shortcut edits, I'm gonna come to, I'm gonna come to where it says product area, and I'm gonna come down to object menu because that's where mine lives. Here, all of the commands are listed in alphabetical order. So I'm gonna go down to lock, JJKL. Um, and you can see it says default command L. I want my shortcut to be command two. So I'm just clicking command two on my keyboard and I'm going to hit assign. Now you can see it automatically adds command two, but it keeps command L. So if you wanted to get rid of command L as even an option, you could hit remove. I'm just gonna keep it because that gives me two ways that I can lock things and I'm probably gonna mess up one way or the other. So it just seems easier for me to keep them both. So I'm gonna keep them both and then I'm gonna hit okay. Now you can see that when I click on my image and I hit command two, it locks. Woo -woo -woo. And over here, command L and it locks, they both work. So there you have it. Those are my most used InDesign keyboard shortcuts. I hope you found this video to be helpful. If you did, consider subscribing to the Extra Credit Design Club YouTube channel. We are always posting all kinds of design tutorials that have been created just for you to help you with wherever you're at in the creative process. We will see you again soon.